Last stretch for Wednesday, our first day of the conference proper, so well done. Good on you for getting here, which is awesome. Now, we, following on, um, those of you who are at the um, keynote this morning, and uh, one of the things that Karen spoke about was the outreachy um, internship program, which we as a community most definitely believe in, and that was shown last year very, very clearly. And so here to talk about that, we have Hisayo and Luke. Please make them welcome. Cool. Okay. Um, I want to say hello first. I'm, I'm Luke Bacon, and I was the, um, one of the mentors in this outreachy project. Um, the other mentor was Hisayo Hor um, was sorry, Hanari Hagen. <laughs> Um, and we both worked at the Open Australia Foundation then. So this was an Open Australia Foundation project. And this is Hisao Hori, Hi. who was the, the first outreachy intern on an Australian project, which is very, very exciting. Um, and just before we begin, um, particularly this week of all weeks, um, in Sydney and at a conference like this, we'd like to acknowledge the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation as the traditional custodians of the land that we're on today in Sydney. Um, this land was never ceded, and we'd like to pay our respects to their um, elders past, present, and emerging, and pay that respect to any Aboriginal people here today. Um, particularly at a conference, it's about technology, and it's about who has access to technology, whose voices count. Um, and we're, today, we're talking about open democracy and politics. It's really, really important to acknowledge that history in Australia about you know, um, structural racism and who is marginalized in this society. Has anyone here read the book uh, Dark Emu by Bruce Pascoe? A little bit of it? Yes, I'm very, very enthusiastic about that book as well. It's a book about um, looking at the best um, secondary source information we have about what Aboriginal society was like before um, invasion. And it's a story about design and innovation and technology and you know, whose technology counts, who's, who's, um, uh, and particularly in Australia when we're looking to make our society much more sustainable now, I hope, um, there is a lot of really interesting ideas and technology that has just been ignored for a really long time. So I'd really you know, think everyone should go and read that book, definitely. Um, but Hisei is going to start off by telling us a bit about Outreachy. Yeah, so Outreachy is a paid remote internship to work with free and open software um, community mentors and what the significance of it is I would like to quote from Outreach website directory because it's very well written in particular. So Outreach internships are open internationally to women, cis and trans, trans men and gender queer people internships and also open to residents and nationals of the United States of any gender who are black, African American, Hispanic, Latina, Native American, American Indian, Alaskan Native, Native Hawaiian, or Pacific Islander. We are planning to expand the program to more participants from underrepresented background in the future. So it's particularly for the people who are traditionally um, marginalized in tech industry. Yep. And really, as we start, I just want to bring up this slide again that Karen showed this morning. Um, this is uh, linux.conf.au, LCA, last year, 2017, in Hobart. And yeah, this is everyone. I mean, probably people who were here um, were rushing down to the front of the stage to put money in this ridiculous top hat that someone had pulled out, um, where everyone was chipping in to raise money to pay for Australian outreachy projects. So it's really made possible by LCA, and it's a real pleasure to be back. Um, but in particular, we'd like to thank um, Karen and Sage and Marina from Outreachy, who not only were really inspiring giving the talk here, and, um, but also just like helping us along the whole way as we, as we got involved. Um, but also Kathy in particular, and Linux Australia for then you know, facilitating all the money and making all that work and paying for the, the, um, the internship. Um, also Valerie, um, who we met uh, at Linux Australia last, at Linux LCA last year, who was talking about um, reproducible builds, and um, Valerie was an intern on the Debian project, and was just so inspiring and awesome, and just gave, you know, was so helpful telling us about their outreach experience and really ins inspiring as well. Um, and also to all the amazing people who applied to, um, to be part of our outreach internship, we were just um, utterly blown away by 
just their kind of bravery and creativity and skills and uh, really lucky to, to be involved in it. Um, so you're going to tell us about why someone would apply and why you applied. Yeah, um, so for me, um, so I don't have a traditional like computer science degree or anything. I have a community organizing background. I've been doing a lot of community art education. So um, when I changed this career, I think I was uh, knocking the door, all the door I could find, but it just never seems to open to me. And um, I was on the verge of giving it up because, well, like nobody seems to want me. But then I saw uh, Twitter, and then just uh, Open Australia Foundation just uh, joined Outreach a little bit later. And this is the first time I saw something that, uh, things that I have passionate to, like democracy or empowerment of people and tech together coming in one project, and it's a mentorship program for people like me. So I thought, well, this like one last time, I will try. So um, for, I'm, we are hoping that um, the people who came to this session today um, go back with some like tangible thing of, because I, um, I think I encounter a lot of people from tech industry who genuinely wants to do good and really care about diversity, but doesn't really know how. So it's just like, oh, we really care about it, but what's the next step? And this is one of the very good case study of next step. So I hope everybody um, take away something tangible and feel hopeful and um, supported and supportive of the people who uh, wants to take up more space and create technology more um, diverse. And I saw that uh, people are surrounding Callan after her keynote. And then if you're going to be the dude who surrounds somebody like that, be the dude who is supporting and wants to do good stuff with her. Yep. Um, and then this is the other side. So why would you apply to be a mentor? And I guess throughout this talk, we're going to try and go kind of back and forward a bit and look at both perspectives. Um, but, you know, Open Australia, I'm sure a lot of people here are familiar with the Open Australia Foundation, but it's, uh, it's an organization that is building free and open source software in Australia to make, to, I would say, fix bugs in Australia's democracies. Um, fix all those problems and make it more accessible to people, um, enable people to participate. And Karen had that great definition this morning that, you know, what's, what's part of the justification for free and open source software is that the short-term corporate interests of the companies that control software don't always align with the long-term interests of people, of the users of that software, of, and she had the word communities there. Um, you could really apply that as well to governments. You know, do the short-term political interests of politicians often align with the long-term interests of citizens in a country or people? You know, I think those are really interesting questions, and shouldn't we have the right to access you know, government in the same way, to participate fully, and everybody should have those rights. And particularly last year, at the beginning of, of last year and, and the year before, um, at Open Australia, we were talking a lot about um, that it's one thing to give people access and make something accessible and you know, make source code accessible or you know, make it the list of politicians accessible or make it easier to make FOI requests. But then there's also issues of structural racism and structural barriers that are also preventing people from getting involved. Um, and so last year at LCA, I gave a talk about some ideas for the future of, of those kinds of projects. And one thing I was talking a lot about was that we really need a broader set of people involved in making those tools, in making civic tech and making open democracy, because we need those perspectives who can see all the problems that someone like a you know, cis, straight, white man, you know, middle class family like me can't see. And the more you know, I think about that and the more you know, I hang out particularly with Hiseo and, and other people, I'm constantly seeing barriers that you know, are totally invisible to me. And it's, you know, it's my job to think about this stuff. So it really, really is critical to get people involved. Um, and like Hiseo was saying, it was this, you, know, you were looking for, you know, it, not only was it um, all the things you're interested in about social justice, but then specifically targeted getting people involved and a, and a paid internship, which I think is a really critical element. It was like that on the other side for us. It, we were at the conference and we were talking about this thing and then Karen gets up on the stage and starts describing outreach here and it was just, you know, 
we were just like, this is exactly what we need to do, um, and we need to get involved in it. Um, so that's kind of like why I think from a, a um, like why that is a good thing to do. If you think free and, source, uh, free and open source software is important, uh, and you think technology actually has the power to impact society, then you really need to be about making it available to more and more people, and Outreach is a great project to do that. But personally, if you're just kind of interested in yourself as well, uh, it's a really, really rewarding, fun, interesting, um, educational program to be a part of, and I would recommend everybody, uh, anyone who thinks that they could um, be a mentor to really um, get involved and, um, and give it a go. Um, I'm just going to talk a little, we're, we wanted to focus a bit on the application process um, because it's quite an unusual application process in Outreachy. It's a very, like, very difficult application process, I would say. People have to, to be even eligible for the program, you have to get a pull request merged into a project, which is, is pretty significant, I would think, particularly for people who, um, it's their, often their first experience of um, open source contributions. Um, and the first step to it uh, is that they have to like, find an issue on one of your projects. We had a whole range of projects. Uh, and we labeled a lot of them good for first contribution. And these are kind of the examples of the types of things people were making contributions on. So if you've got projects that have lots of kind of issues that uh, maybe people have to go in and just change a few, a few lines even or build something quite simple, that's a really good issue to kind of um, get people involved. But it was pretty epic, I have to say. Um, 42 people contacted us about this from 11 time zones. Uh, from literally all over the world. We had people applying, um, in really in incredible people. Um, uh, 20 people submitted applications. Eight people had pull requests merged. So aside from you know, uh, you know, all that, that work that they were doing, that's a huge, really tangible impact on our projects. Um, Hanari, in particular, really emphasized like these 42 people Often this is their first experience of open source, and it has to be a really, really good welcoming experience. Um, and that's a really important contribution we could make. So we put a lot of effort into that. Um, and we had this Trello board um, for managing this process to make sure that every single person um, actually got a, a really useful um, experience in that introduction. And I'll just quickly explain it. Um, so people would contact us, and, they, and obviously all the names are blacked out, but um, people would contact us. Um, and we would then talk to them and kind of offer them some advice. They might say, can you point me in the direction of something? And we would respond. Um, if they then kind of emailed back um, and we thought, yes, this is a person who, who can actually go through and it's worth them spending time doing this because they're going to invest a lot of time, we would invite them to our Slack channel. And so you know, a whole lot of people got invited to the Slack channel. If not, um, they, we'd kind of say, you know, come back next round or you know, give them some advice to go look at one of the other outreachy projects and they would be out of, out of the round. Um, then people would submit a pull request and they would go into the submit a pull request and we would know like, what we need to look at there and, and really help all those people get over the line. And then um, people had pull requests merged and that column is the people who were eligible. Um, and then we had all this labeling system for who actually submitted applications who have we written proper responses to? What type of contributions did they make? And that was quite useful because Outreachy is remote, but also Hanari and I uh, were remote. He lives up in Bellingen now, and just trying to communicate all of this between people and really make sure every single person gets a really good response. Um, we found this really helpful. Another tip that I think worked really well was our Slack channel. So we had an Outreachy channel that everyone was invited to. And, um, and they could talk, you know, we would do all our announcements in there and talk to people. Uh, and I'm, I, I'm sure there is a free software alternative to Slack that would work great for this as well. Um, but all the, all, the, um, applica all the applicants were also exchanging information and talking to each other in there. We also then had a um, private outreach mentors room that was really important for Hanari and I to be in there and talk about, you know, or Hanari, I think you said slightly the wrong thing there, or he would mostly say that back to me, um, or uh, all kinds of like feedback to try and make sure that was as good as possible. And then also the ability to have private conversations with people. So often an applicant would talk, try and talk to us directly about something because it can be intimidating to talk in that public space. So I think Slack worked really well. Um, why don't we come back to that if we have time? That's about our project. 
So my experience on my end of it, yes, it was, I would say it was really involved process. Um, I actually don't even know how I would have done it if I had like a full-time job or something. I had not that much going on at the time. So it was great. And um, get really great and super particular feedback, which probably what you want if you are a junior developer. And, um, and also it was really good in the sense I could see how my mentors, Luke and Hannah, I was so committed to give a good feedback or like positive feedback, super welcoming. And it's good to know how they work and how it would look like if I were to work with them. Um, which is, I would say it's like really there in the um, engineering or technology, the STEM fields that you get very encouraging um, attitude of, yes, you can do this. Because that's actually like honestly not not something I experienced ever I go into this field. So that was almost like restored my trust in something good could happen here. <laughs> so yeah, so that was pretty great and very involved and I learned a lot from that process. And, and that's your first pull request. Yay. <laughs> they made 42 pull requests to Open Australia projects during the internship, so pretty epic. Um, cool. What did we do as well? Okay, so um, so we the project that we were working on is a councillor contribution project. We were wanting to come up with a better name, but kind of didn't in our time plane, but still it's open source, we want a better name if you have any ideas. So it's just uh, basically like um, this project support other open source apps that Open Australia have such as planning alerts that helps people to write their local councils um, about their planning applications. And there are over 5,000 local councils in Australia and then their information periodically change because of election or people retire. And that is not feasible for um, organization the size of Open Australia to manage. So definitely we need a help of volunteer. But um, before this project, that uh, the process of volunteer to contribute to update the information was not friendly enough. So only very particular people could make a contribution. So we wanted to change the process to make it more friendly and increase the people who can participate in this project. And so this is part of what we made. Um, so you can um, get the new information, updated information of your local, not doesn't have to be your council, but the, any councils that you find particularly interested and then look into the new councillor's name or the councillor who doesn't exist. So adding new information of their name and email, which is the um, very foundational information. And then you can submit that form as a suggested counselor. And then this is a receiving end of the app. This is an admin interface that we get the suggestion from the volunteers. And you can see the source of where they found the information, and then name, email. And then there are other sections of optional information of the contributor if they want to provide their information, which um, we were intentionally not um, collecting the information of the contributor if they don't want to. And also, it's not a good idea for us to hold the information we don't necessarily can be accountable for, and also to lower the uh, value of contribution. And then, um, I'll just take a step back as well and just explain a little bit that most outreach internships, as I understand them, are like a kind of quite contained bit like go and write integration tests 
for this part of this software or you know, add this quite specific feature or fill out this documentation and do it over a series of months. At Open Australia, we didn't really have the resources to kind of have somebody doing an extra project that, that like, we weren't all kind of working on. So uh, when, we, when we set up these projects um, to make this system much easier, we were like, we're actually going to work on this all together. And also being a tiny organization that does so many different things, it was like, it's not just writing you know, Rails tests or you know, front end code or research, something like that. Like we really challenged Hiseo to do all aspects of this feature, the admin, the user interface, you know, and actually trying to make it as usable as possible. Rails programming, tests, documentation, integrations between different systems, um, which is, it was a huge bit of it that we'll talk about now. So this is the CS, uh, CSV. Am I, is that? Okay, yes. Right? Yes, CSV. Uh, API that Hiseo wrote. Um, and the, re the story behind this is that um, the, the, um, the way we're doing this local councillor data, and this will come back to how all you guys can get involved, is um, all the data is actually stored in GitHub as JSON, and it gets converted to JSON out of these CSVs. And that's a pattern that every politician uses, which is an international project to publish open data about federal politicians all over the world. So in open source style, we were taking um, their process, which they use for federal politicians, and applying that at the local level, which also meant we got to reuse lots of their tools, including this CSV to Popolo data converter. Um, so how it actually works in planning alerts, and we don't want to go into this too much, but was that you make this contribution, it gets approved by the admin, and then there's this um, CSV API, and then on the other side, um, on the data repo, the person comes along and runs a rake task, and that kind of does the diff and like works out any errors and stuff like that and produces this JSON. And it was really kind of a hacker process, like what is the kind of quickest way we can get this working using these tools? Originally it was this Google Sheet, um, and then how can we progressively make this more and more useful? And we got up to this stage of, you know, all of these steps should actually be automated, and that's kind of where it's, it's up to a little bit now, but we'll talk about that later. Anyway, the users don't care about all of that plumbing. They just come to the application and planning alerts, and the, um, the local counselors, that keeps popping up, but that's not real, that ask a question thing. Um, uh, all your local counselors are there for you to write to about planning applications um, that people entered through the system that Hiseo made. Um, we want to talk a little bit about what worked about the process, about like um, working together between Toronto and Australia, which you know, was really tricky with time zones. It's like almost the worst time zone difference you can have to the east coast of Australia. And something that was really helpful, um, that he, well, Hiseo in particular told us was really helpful, was spending time at the beginning coming out with strong design principles for the pro project that we could keep coming back to. Um, and, and we actually had to say draft these, which was a great way to include them in, you know, saying how did they want to do this project, what worked for them, what were the important things for them. But I've, I've found design um, principles like this really useful for lots of types of projects because it just, it's a tool that, that you put kind of an agreed knowledge into, and then throughout the project, it just saves you heaps of time having massive conversations again and again. You can be like, you know, we should do this thing according to our design principles, or you know, I really like this, but I think it could be doing this aspect of these a little bit more. And you can keep reflecting back on this document. Um, and it's also a great way to get to know each other at the beginning of a project. Um, yeah, and um, so I, outside of coding work, I do a lot of facilitation and anti-oppression training, so art-based education. So creating like, um, um, space agreement kind of thing, it's not too unfamiliar for me. And then for this particular case, I used a lot of uh, principal design just from Design Justice Network that's based in Detroit, uh, coming out of Allied Media Conference. Um, if anybody interested in design justice, I would highly, highly recommend to go check them out. And yeah, so I look into their Design Justice Network principle quite a bit to draft our design principle. Yeah, so Toronto is a long way from Sydney. It's very true. Um, about 
14 hours time differences, which was pretty challenging,、uh, especially as a junior developer who had been told like if you are stuck on something for 20 minutes, you have to ask someone, and then it's turned into 14 hours and 20 minutes. So for that to、um, How did I navigate that? It was really great to have a local mentor that doesn't have any time differences. Somebody who are invested in me,、uh, willing to help me. So, especially as、um, a gender queer person of color who are kind of not、uh, or quite not those white tech blow, I can't just walk into the meetup group and say, "Do you code?" I code. Do you want to check out my project? It's not going to happen to me. So. Which I think is a very important point to make.、Um, so it's important for me or people like us to have a personal network, people who are invested and、um, intentionally try to uphold you. So that's how I survived this process. And um, and I actually I just say on that point as well. I think that's really interesting. Um, aspect of the kind of like structural difference that, like,、um, if people can't find a mentor who is somebody they feel safe with in their workplace, that's kind of like labor that is being outsourced to the community, and you know other people they they're, they're going to have to resource people or have that other connection locally、um, that a lot of people might not otherwise have to have,、um, which makes me really think about the importance of local networks and then people get involved in mentoring and teaching. Yeah.、Um, and,、uh, yep. Sorry, I'm going to talk about Git stuff.、Uh, yeah. yeah. So, so time zones making it difficult enough, and also、uh, this was the first time for me to using Git as a、uh, GitHub as a main platform of technical communication. And writing communication is hard. Period. And talking about technical issue in writing is even harder. And also.、Um, I was having hard that that I didn't know what lacon means. I was just like, what lacon means? So、oh, yeah. <laughs> he's keeps saying lacon.、So、I always say, <laughs> I reckon we should do this, or I reckon that, or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> which is not only a kind of Australianism, but yeah. Yeah. Then, kind of but、weird. like lucky enough, my mentor, local mentor, is a kind of person who watch a lot of British TV show, so that helped. And <laughs> and also, it's really important. It was important for me to have someone who can. Sort of translate tech talk into plain language.、Um, I was trying to look into my old pull request to look into what I didn't understand, and good for me, I don't understand what I didn't understand because yeah, all this tech talk makes sense to me. Like I don't understand what I didn't understand, so that's good for me to think about. Oh, I gained knowledge, but that's also illustrate how hard it is to、um, identify the gap. Of how hard it is to talk about certain technical issues for to someone who have different level of knowledge. So that part, it's always important to have another person. If you can have another group of people to help you、uh, help you the, bridge the gap, I think. Yeah, yeah and and Open Australia and、uh, and Hanari and I were,、um, you know. Talk a lot about communication and clear communication, and just like constantly, so many things that slip in unintentionally and unconsciously that you really have to check yourself all the time.、Um, and you know, Open Australia uses Git in quite a, you know, in a really robust way, I would say, and、um, that you know I am kind of quite in love with, and and I love Git, and I'm quite obsessed with it, and it works extremely well,、um, but. Like yeah, you know, with this project and outreach generally, and contributing to open source, like learning Git is huge. Like it's such a big task, and it's really difficult.、Uh, and everyone goes through that really stressful bit where they think they've just de deleted the entire project. I certainly did.、Um, and yeah, I'm I'm not sure kind of what the solution is there because it is just very very hard.、Um, and it was a big thing for all these applicants and also for Hiseo. Is that working?、Uh, yes. Um, so we just wanted to talk a little bit about、um, at the end here, what now, what's happening with this project, and how you can get involved in this. I'm sure there's a lot of people here who are really interested in open democracy and think there should be open data about all their local councillors. 
uh, and we'd be happy to talk more about that maybe in questions or afterwards. But let me just tell you a little bit how you can get involved. Um, so firstly, you can actually collect information about your local councillors and submit contributions through this process. Uh, and that has happened. Um, I think Paul, his name is, Concrete Gannett, who might actually be at the conference because his Twitter profile is all about Open Data Australia, and I mean, sorry, Open, open Source Software Australia, maybe people know him. Um, but he was the first person outside of, of the organization and now like direct volunteers to contribute local councillor data. Um, uh, there's this really, I think we use milestones on GitHub kind of quite effectively for this. Um, but there's this milestone on the planning alerts repo um, and the URLs down the bottom there that kind of talks a bit about the setup of this project and links to kind of the significant links. And then you can see there's all these issues. And of course, as you're working on a project, it keeps growing, growing, growing. So there's you know, many closed, but many open, and many more to open, hopefully, and to close, hopefully. Um, and you can see the top one there is prompt people to contribute local councillor information. So get that out to more people and get it into the application as well. Um, and then the other bit is, so planning alerts isn't actually the source of truth of all that. It's not where that data is kept. It's in its own repo, the Australian Local Councillor Popolo repo. I won't go into what Popolo is right now, but it's a, uh, um, it's a politician data format. And in that repo, um, there's instructions on how to make updates. So contributors have like done some scraping sometimes in Queensland that's possible to get some of the local councillor information, but you might just want to update your local area and you can get the instructions on how to do it on that repo. And then this is the other really critical bit. Well, what did it mean to me? Um, yeah, so it was great experience. Like, I can't, I couldn't expect any more from this. I just wish it continued longer. But yeah, it's, um, I learned a lot um, about communication and um, coding and also I think for me the biggest thing is I could see this like glimpse of light and hope in uh, working in uh, technology because I was feeling very hopeless before I got into this project and um, it's just really great to see um, like social justice and um, democracy and technology there are space for those things to work together and then being a developer doesn't have to be all about making money and uh, great benefit and catered lunch, which is a great thing to have. But um, I feel like oftentimes our conversation tend to be contained in that kind of personal satisfaction doesn't go outside of capitalism or anything to like revolutionary change in the process, which our project is not necessarily the most revolutionary thing, but it's a fast step. And uh, it's just great to be able to have the hope itself in it. Cool. Yeah. So um, we wanted to leave a bit of time for um, questions, both about you know um, Hiseo's perspective about being a a, ment a yeah, someone mentored through this project, about the project itself if you're interested, also if you're in more interested in how outreachy works or the kind of what it's like being a, a mentor doing that. Um, yeah, let's have some questions. <laughs> yeah. It's really inspiring to feel that you know, our contributions at uh, last year's LCA have helped someone directly. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much um, for sharing that, that story. Do you think that the that um, objective of getting a What did you think? What did I think? Yeah. Um, um, first, I thought it's too high. Mm -hmm. oh. Oh, yeah, the question was firstly, um, okay. uh, that bar of the application process having to have a pull request merged, that's yeah, a very, very high bar. And uh, did the question to think that that was, uh, or did we think that was too high a bar? Do I, I do. I just think it was really high. Yeah. <laughs> um, first, I thought uh, like, there was no way I could do this, and um, 
but before creating pull request, I like talked to Luke and how encouraging he was. Also, Hanawa was was very okay. Just uh, just enough for me to give a shot, and then I think starting is the hardest. And then that um, feeling of insecurity and maybe I can't do it. Um, once that part is down, then you can just start learning and uh, get the good feedback, and then eventually go there. So. I, I wouldn't say it was easy, but at the same time, it's probably um, very uh, affirming in a way because it's not like somebody just got the, they closed the door in front of me just seeing my face. I was actually approved by what I did. So. And it, it gave us uh, an opportunity that you know, when people made commits and they were merged, that was something really to celebrate. Like No matter what happened with their application, that's a very significant thing for them and their CV and experience and everything, um, but also a, you know, something to really help them build energy and confidence. Um, and the other thing we found was you know, eight, eight people made, got, had merged contributions. You know, and one of them had, I think, six pull requests merged. It was, there, were, there were really, like, there were all these people from New Delhi and St. Petersburg and uh, Rio de Janeiro and um, where else do we have people from Albania, uh, all across America, like li literally all over the world. And there were people who were like, you know, someone like Hiseo has this incredible background in social justice and activism and then is also a trained Rails developer. Or like there was someone in St. Petersburg who was a PhD in law who wanted to help us with FOI stuff. Like these are standout people, you know. Um, so it is a very high bar, but, you know, the, the type of people who are applying to Outreachy uh, you know, were more than, more than you know, good enough to, to kind of get there, um, I would say. Um, another question? Rosie? Uh, yes, um, I mean, like, definitely I look into um, so, Stack Overflow and everything I could find, but uh, I find the culture pretty blowy and um, intimidating. Um, I would never, uh, it would take me quite a bit to actually ask questions because it's a lot about how I ask questions and then it takes a long time to actually get what I'm asking for, which I could say that's also a way that you are giving, getting feedback, but it's a lot harsher feedback that's kind of enough to like clash you, like, I don't care anymore. So um, I think that it's um, also like outside of tech, I, I have experience being mentor of someone and being also menteed. So I think more than, not maybe not more than, but as much as what you are giving as a feedback how you are holding the space is important, and then how Luke and Hanali held the space for me was so special and very different from any online tech forum, I would say. And so the question there was, uh, did, how do you feel about, um, or did you find online resources like Stack Overflow uh, useful? Um, the question, yeah. Um, so, yeah, so, in, so the question is, what is the kind of point of truth for information about local councillors? And it, it's also, I kind of reiterate, it's one of those things when you do a civic tech project, you know, when the Open Australia Foundation does a project, it's like, oh, we need a list of every government agency in Australia who might be available to FOI. Surely that list exists somewhere. And then, of course, it's like, no, that list does not exist anywhere that is, you know, or nowhere that's accessible to you. And then you have to go and make that data. Um, and with this situation, it's like, yeah, are there, you know, national or state registers of every local councillor in the state that are kept up to date that have also their contact information because we need people to contact them? As usual, no, there isn't. Um, so, and then there's the other context is, 
local councillors um, change and also the councils themselves change. And while we're doing this project, there was big council mergers in New South Wales, um, uh, Victoria, there's some merged at some point as well, and Queensland had mergers at a different time. So things, things are moving, things are crazy. Um, and we just took it really practically. Like, the information the council has on the website, like, if ours is as good as what theirs say, then that's good, and, like, that's good. And if then, if someone has a problem with us, then we can go and ask the council to fix it or whatever. Um, and it, yeah, it was always, you know, what is, what's the latest best information from the council? So state governments generally have a good list of, of who the councils are. Or Wikipedia has really good lists as well. So often, um, particularly for information about what parties politicians are in, that won't be on the council website. And sometimes it's not on the um, electoral commission websites either, but Wikipedia happens to be a very good source of that information. Is that helpful? Yeah, cool. Cool. Any more questions? Yeah. Cool. Well, thank you very much for having us, and thank you again for funding this, and please get involved. Thanks. Thank you. Just before you run away, um, I have a little token of appreciation for you from the good people who are running this conference. Um, it is a bit of a shared project as well, so that could be great yeah. fun. Thank you very much for sharing that information with us. Cool. Thank it's you. Wonderful. Thank you.